Hey, Evan, what's the far. crack? How are you? How are you getting on? Thanks a million for coming up. Thanks for having me. You didn't watch uh, Biden coming off the plane and you weren't in, enthralled in that today? Uh, I was bits and pieces of not a whole lot. I was more interested actually the bit when the dog kind of snubbed him there. Did you see the dog? No, I didn't see that. What happened? Uh, when he's at the, he was at Aris and kind of, do you know the, uh, Mikey's uh, Bernese? Yeah. Um, I want the exact same, so I'm big into him. Like, so I was, when I seen the little clip today, I put, but the dog wasn't having none of him. He was like standoffish and on your go. He wasn't getting involved with him, so. Oh, gee, I'm sick of looking at Because uh, it's such a lot of shite, like. And he's over in Mayo now, right? And they're, Falling over themselves, and Mayo are the worst to support their own. They, <laughs> they fucking hate everyone from Mayo. Most people from Mayo, they they never support their own. Biden comes off the fucking airplane. Everyone in Dublin licking his hall. I think Hunter's with him. Is Hunter with him? The son is with him. He's a fucking heroin addict. That's okay. I think it, it's okay. But Jesus Christ, at least ask him some hard questions. The uh, do you? I kind of. Should he have someone like a helper there with him, or is there something? There's, is he to me? He's, he's like there's something wrong. That's what I think. He's like when Barack Obama came over. Like you have to respect Barack yeah, Obama. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You know he's a great speaker and like this lad. He's a poor devil. He's an old lad. What's it's like next? they're just walking him everywhere. And just <laughs> just sit there, stand there. Don't say anything. It's like he's been taken out of home for the day. Yeah. And <laughs> do you know what? Like, yeah, God but, help him. But fair play to him. He's getting around. Yeah. Uh, you're a Kilkenny man. Kilkenny man, yeah. Thomastown man, come to Kilkenny. Thomastown, just by all everyone's from Thomastown, aren't they? Around Kilkenny, I always say you're from Kilkenny. No, Thomastown. Do you know the Thomastown? If you don't know, uh, no, Thomastown. Who do you know um, there? I know a few lads that used to work for Dan Morrissey. Them boys. Yeah, they're all well off men now, aren't they? So you know, yeah, probably know a few of them. Probably a few, a few truckers. Yeah, there. yeah. <laughs> Norvell, big one. Oh yeah, Norvell. Do you know, Norvell Frosty? Uh, do, do you know him? Know him well. A good, good friend of mine. Ah, jeez, I know him well. Yeah. He's some fine rigs now. He's a fucking few fine rigs. He, he is Don Cole Cowboy. Uh, fair play to Frosty, but he, he I remember, picked up that. I remember him when he was only a chap working for the father. Yeah, he's, Frosty is some yorker. He's yeah. a fucking, I mean, I, to be honest, I was like, Frosty, one of my good friends, Ragers, is like best friends with Frosty. And I was like, Frosty is a neighbor of mine, but he's a fucker. He'd like, he'd let you know. Frosty yeah. and you wouldn't like he would always have something to fucking sneer or have something to say so I was like especially when he's drinking oh, an absolute fucker yeah but uh, yeah Ray was I was like hmm I don't know about Frosty he's a fucking cheeky little bastard you know he's a couple of years younger than me mm. but Ray was here he's sound he's sound he's sound and then I sure look I always thought he was sound enough but a cheeky bastard you know, he's a couple of years younger than you and doesn't yeah. give a fuck like, he's still a cheeky bastard an awful cheeky <laughs> bastard and still put you in your place like the minute like, yeah. but um, why is he called Frosty Oh, well, he's a forest and his outlet, I suppose, probably had it, maybe so. <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, no, they only live down the road. I was in school with his sister, and that's so we'd be families would be very close, like they're a sound old family. And then, yeah, like Ragers, Ragers, like, do you know, he, kind of our group came together, and do you know, the younger lads, mm. as lads drift off, lads yeah. come together, yeah. and then. He's kind of one of our group and he's a hard fucking grafter, Frosty. Like, he'd be like... You don't uh, succeed at the timber unless you work hard. It's he just, fucking it's, works it's hard. Of, it's one of them games. And he's like, you know, he he came home from Oz there to take it home, mm. take over that business when his father wasn't mm. well and he's after driving it on. Oh, you have to has, fucking yeah. fair And he took to on a good bit. It was a good bit. Come home. He was, like his, he was so he's, looking forward to going over there and having the crack. And he, he was, was living the, the dream. He was living the dream over there, yeah. yeah. So... You have to, I'd have a lot of respect for him for that now, you know, because yeah. he stepped yeah, up stepped up and mm. fucking, you know, that is running good. Like, like you said, some rigs. I like, know, he put some effort in. He loves them. Yeah, so they're lovely. Isn't they go up to the camera's truck run there every year. Yeah. Did you ever go up to it? No, I was never up at that now. Yeah, you so have to go I, up to the next one. I'll come right? up the next one. I think you're an awful cunt. I know, I know someone. I have I have a contact up here now. I you do? Up, you yeah. do? I feel safe. I heard it's fucking dodgy coming up if you don't know. <laughs> what age are uh, you? 38. 38. Did you look a young 38? I get that, yeah. I'm going to be a fresh OLED, hopefully. I was a rough young lad, fresh <laughs> OLED. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, I'm a... Hard um, man, soft lover. <laughs> soft, uh, yeah, gentle lover. <laughs> the, uh, doesn't, uh, <laughs> Big uh, family. Uh, two sisters, just three of us, and then say I'd have obviously mum and dad, and yeah, two sisters, and then I'd have say cousins there close that'd be very close, you know, live say, near, you live and near, and then say 
my godmother's uh, Trish Tishy, um, she would have like minded me when I was growing up, minding my sisters, and she's a son Adam, so we'd be close. Adam would be in our house, so he's like just yeah. fucking might as well so be a brother. Close or family sister. network. Yeah, and then my other cousins up the road. So, so my my daughter. Um, Abby, she's 15, going on 16, and my uncle, um, Joe Mags's daughter is the same age, so they are like fucking Siamese twins, they're joined at the hip, and she's always in the house, or Abby's up in there, so that's... They'll be fighting over lads in a few years now, you wait and see. Well, fucking... Just don't get involved, Evan. Don't, <laughs> don't fucking get involved. Me. There's a few lads sniffing around there already. <laughs> hey, you were one of them sniffers too at one time. That's the fucking problem, I yeah. know what they're thinking. That's so. the thing about being a lad with chaps, you just, just don't think about it. Yeah. Just don't like, think about it. Fucking, he's a right lad there when it's not, yeah. when you're, when it's, when it's not around your fucking door, but now I'm after going... Full circle. I'm like... How the fuck is this happening? She was like a baby. She was a baby yesterday, and now she's she's going to Italy next week on a school trip. And but well, actually, tell you what frightened me there recently. Uh, there some people up in the house, and like Abby is, she's very, she's very, um, she's very good, she's very mature for age, and I suppose the relationship we have, but. I still, she's she's very, you know, she's only a baby. Like to be, do you know, in your head, you know, I know. And next thing, I was like, she probably head off traveling soon, will you? And I was like, oh, it's her tra it actually hit me. I was like, holy fuck, she will be mm. like in a couple of years. Like, and what the fuck? I was like, so that was something that hit me there. Only like, it, it, a it week, hits you like a ton of bricks. Little things like that, like, you know, can be, um, but uh, yeah, no. In general, she's uh, she's very good. We get on very well. Um, yeah, isn't it weird that your only job as a father is to have your kids ready to live without you? Yeah, it's it's, it's funny mad. and the way you learn as you go along and mm. like. So I'd say I was an early starter. So all my mates now have all small kids, two and three year olds, like, and I'm like trying to weigh up because Abby. And I'm a fucking touch wood. I'm afraid to say this, that she's been very good even through the teenage years. Like, I probably find it hard to even think when we fought. I, I think you'll have a better relationship because you're going to be similar in age. You won't be I, an uh, old man. I, I think so, yeah. I, I, it's, And then at the other, that's good, but then I'm kind of frightened because I was like, I know what the fuck I was up to. Hmm. Like, I feel like I'm probably early 20s in my head. I probably am in my head, but I'm like... Shit, do you know the car you're driving? You're, <laughs> yeah, <right> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, boy racer, so I was over the years, and uh, that kind of um, the old it doesn't leave. I I have a thing for cars. Like even if it's like, if I'm somewhere now, I could be even somewhere with a bunch. I'm at work. I'm doing something for work. Like and you might be with a few suits or something like that. And next thing, you hear this <laughs> coming up the road. I have to look. That? I. Which, like that, you know. Yeah. yeah, it could be a fucking one liter micro. But were, were you the the youngest in your family? Oldest. You're the oldest. Yeah. And did you get on well with your parents and your sisters? And yeah, I get. It. Yeah, we do pretty well. Like, say, we'd be like, probably yeah. When you were younger. Yeah, yeah. We, I, I would have. Yeah, got on. Yeah, we got on pretty well with my did two you, sisters. Did yeah. you like school? Mm, I liked going to school to have the crack. I didn't want to do fucking, but I, I had a really good bunch of friends. I had a really nice class, right? The boys and the girls in my class were like fucking sound and sounder than the class above us or sounder than the class below us. Do you know, mm. we had an, do you know, sometimes that happens. And I remember the teachers used to be always saying it to man. But um, so I, I liked going to school literally to have the crack. Oh, and then, academically, were you good in it? If I liked it, if I wanted to, but if you could, but going to my head and get me through French, not shoot me. Whereas I go up to TG, woodwork, um, kind of like maths a little bit, but then when they start throwing the letters at you, I was like, fuck, do you know? So, but then I only stayed in school till I was 16. What I, did your parents do? Dad and mom, mom worked in the council, dad worked in the council. So dad is, um, mom worked in, she would have worked in motor tax and worked in planning and then up till say probably in her 40s, but mum was got MS, so she was sick 
and she would have had to retire early. And then dad worked in the corporation, but dad then would, we would have had a building company at home as well. So dad would like kind of, you know, it, 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 I suppose dad's, dad is kind of like always on the go. Like, you know, his thing is like, he come in from working the corporation, like, and that's grand, let's run a building kind of company. And then that got so busy that, it would have he would have had to kind of finish and take a career break for a good few years. To concentrate on the, on the building, like because you know it was in the boom, and we would have been building big houses, say one offs, and we could have had like anything up to ten of them maybe on a year, I suppose. And you know, were you going in the middle of all that building on your spare time? And so I would have been. So what happened with me? I was in school, and do you remember we got. Back in, jeez, I don't I'm not good with years, but you remember we got the foot and mouth. Yes. Say I would have been about 16, so like 20 something, 22 years ago now. And for American people and people listening, he didn't actually get his foot in his mouth. Yeah. That was a disease that was going in the agricultural business. It was like sheep and cattle, and we had to wash our feet and cars and all that. And we couldn't, so I was in transition year, come to transition year, and I wasn't allowed, we weren't allowed to go anywhere. So I was like, I'm not fucking going to class every day for, so I was like, we would have had the building and I'd be like, here, I, no, I'm not in school today, I'll go working and then, so eventually what happened is that I was like, my, how I, I, I my boss then say, so dad, dad was the, we we're building, but we had electricians obviously in, mm. uh, Jimmy Beck, um, Jimmy, I was doing the odd day here and there and then Jimmy Beck. Awesome name. It's uh, Beck. Beck. So uh, he's some man now. In fairness, uh, Beck at your beck and call. At your beck and call. <laughs> he was like, I had. For, I worked with Jimmy for six years, and get on your beck. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. You can fucking get the good out of it. But um, yeah, I ended up in transition. I kind of one day at a time, and next thing I was working, I was like. Sure, I'm not fucking going to school. Let me offer. And then Jimmy needed someone. So you got the taste of the money. The money, boy. See, yeah. And then that was it. It was like, so a mom and dad went in and kind of to the principal and said, listen, he wants to work. And he, I actually tell you, dad actually struck up a deal with the principal that I could hurl with the school and go to work every day. So my boss used to be that That's sound. fucking great deal. I was like, it couldn't be a better deal for I you there now. fucking serious. I was like, so my boss had dropped me off at four o'clock training with the school. I swear to God, it was fucking brilliant. Like, I thought I was, like, deadly. So I was off working. Boys would be from coming down, out. we'd be down, walking down to the pitch, and I'd jump out of the van, work at clothes, go in, tug out, and then train twice a week. But me, he was that sound that he'd let me do it, like, you know. Yeah. So Big into hurling, were you? Yeah, I liked the hurling, yeah. Now, to be honest, I probably wasn't a great hurler in my day, but I would have been, like, that little dirty corner back maybe or something you know yeah. but you put I, in the effort anyway I put in the effort and I'd make you fucking earn a score off me mm. do you know that kind of way but I'd be as I kind of depending with one or two coaches I would have had a couple of good years depending on the coach if I bought into it I had a really good year in the school when I was that year because um, basically one of the teachers arrived uh, Derek Dooley and um, to be honest with you I actually tested him the first day he got to the school and nearly broke him and myself and one of the boys just said, listen, when he comes in, new teacher, let's repeat every word he says. Every word. So into the class, he was a religion teacher. So he came in, good morning, guys, my name is Mr. Dooley. I'm sorry, good morning, my name is Mr. Dooley. This is happening. And he's like, fuck. So next thing, he kept going on. Next thing he was like, yeah, that get old real quick. So the next thing he freaks out, throws us out of the class. And so that was grand. I was up. Actually, one of my friend's mother was acting vice principal at the time. And she was like, sit down there, you in the canteen. And she put two of us in the canteen and forgot about us. Then, like, we sat up there all day, grand golf school. But that was grand, was forgotten about. The next thing, about two weeks later, the fucking school, they were like, okay, hurling's starting up. And next thing, who's the fucking trainer? Dooley. He was. And I said, oh, shit. You fucked up. I fucked up. And then, but I got stuck into training and he liked my kind of personality and I was dogged and... I ended up being the captain. So and what age were you at this time? 16, 17? Yeah, 15. 15. 15. So 15, kind of six. It would have been the junior school team. And so, yeah. So did you proceed like that all through school, left school, started working? Left school working and I got away in transition year then. I, my parents just let me leave. So straight into an apprenticeship with uh, James Beck Electrical. Did you and work hard? Yeah, it would have been. A, I, Jimmy probably tell you I was the 
Oh, yeah, did you like it, the yeah, I loved electrical? It. Yeah, I did like it. And I like going to work every day. I love going to work. And But I had a, you know, I was had a good boss that he wasn't a dog to me. And it was like, I didn't have to fucking chase or tango. It was an electrician. He trained me and he brought me everywhere that, say, I was very lucky. It was just me and him, right? Yeah. So, and, and then one or two other lads kind of came along. But say, mm. even when I was like, he'd bring me, do you know, you'd be doing your day on the site and then you might do a couple of jobs on the way home. He'd bring me and show me mm. everything. I was really good at following, like saying after two years, I was off wearing houses left, right and centre myself and I'd have two of my friends with me, like Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we'd be wearing houses and Nixers, like, do you know, so. Making big money. Yeah, making, like I used to be fucking knocking down, like when I was 20, 21, like I was knocking down serious books for a young lad and broke on a Wednesday, probably knocking down more than a grand a week at times mm. and fucking Thursday evening waiting on wages, like, do you know, yeah. and just all little Nixers and, do you know, you got, I was getting good money off Jimmy, he, he, well looked after and then your Nixers in the evening a couple of but my, my mates were like I could be doing a Nixer somewhere and I'd be ringing one, hey Brendan he, where are you at come on I have to go do this come on with me and then I'd be with him then, and you know we was hanging out like it was yeah. just but we were working at the same time it mm -hmm. wasn't so yeah I did I would have liked the sites but then I would have been like driving and stuff as well so when I came in in the evenings from Jimmy if I wanted a jeep the owl had to be like, yeah, you can have the Jeep, but there has to be a load of stuff collected there in Capital Hardware and that needs to go to Burris and this fuck. So I'd get the Jeep, but I'd have to do an hour's work for it. And then, yeah. so, but then I'd have the Jeep for the night. So that was all right, you know. So, so when did you get your first car? Oh, Jesus, lad. This, myself and my next door neighbour, Hannah's, right? Before I got on the road when I was 17. So I had a car waiting for me on, like in a garage. Like I had paid for it. Like, you know, I bought yeah. a Honda Civic. It was ready to go for when I was 17. Uh, oh no, it? sorry, 18. I actually started driving the, the father's Jeep on the road. Mm. But before I got onto the road, me and Hannah's would have had 16 cars between us in the fields because he had a farm. He's about 300 acres. So we'd be getting any neighbor that we'd see with the car getting banger. Um, what are you doing with that? that? And next thing we'd have it, we'd be get, looking up. Do you remember there was the little um, yeah, local the trader? Out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Local trader. Yeah. And it'd be like just. Do you know, was there a part in the cars under 50 yeah. or under 100 euro? Rex, so we'd be going off ringing these lads and should have fucking carry on. Like, then we'd have one or two lads, maybe, that'd be a bit bolder than us. Say, we, we would have had them like that and we'd be getting, we might fucking drive at home from somewhere. Like, I'd be 16, like, you know, and I'd be like, yeah. one of the older lads that'd be 17 or 18 driving, he'd drive on ahead and ring back the two of us be in the car and he'd be on the phone the whole way and be like, is there anything there? No, there's nothing there. And we go down the back road next time we get to the field and we'd be grand. So, so a young lad mad into cars, loads of money. What was your first car that you were mad to get? Honda Civic, 1.4 Honda Civic. What year, Was it new? 96, I think. No, it wasn't new. It was a good few years old, but it would have had, at the time, would have been a nice car, like 17 inch wheels, bit of a kit. Or the Venoms. Fuck, where the Venoms? I don't Everyone so. back then, Venoms, if you the 306. No, or, no, no. I didn't. Venoms were the multi spoke. Yeah, they were they like Spider. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, they weren't Venoms. There would have been a five spoke. I tell you, Wolf Racers. Do you remember, wolf <laughs> do you, do you remember back then? If you'd 17, you were bought. Oh, fucking. You, you, were, were, you were going around the corner and the back would be rubbing off. The it. arch is rubbing. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't get big ones in the back. Nowadays, 17s. Everyone would be laughing at you. Grand fucking 20s now, but. It, were you a lunatic in it? Mm, probably if mm, yeah kind of, would I have been a lunatic would have been yeah I probably would have been did not. did the whole money and cars thing did you go mad did it drive you mad a little probably a little bit like, like say I would have I I think my age group we fucking Pe oh, we, we hit the peak by for the, the boom. We wasted for the sake of wasting. Oh, man. Because we thought it was never, ever going to end. Like, I, yeah, like I had no expenses living at home. Like if my mother wanted a few pounds, I was like, what? What? Sorry, <laughs> fucking, what do you mean 20 euro for fucking keeping, for food and stuff? <laughs> I'm fucking, John, and you're like, you have the nicest cars, fucking drinking the arse out of it. Like yeah. every weekend was like, the weekend was from Thursday till Sunday. Sunday at, one at 12 o'clock like yeah. you'd be home Sunday night for unless you'd done the dog on it and, and then, then you were fucked the next morning collected on the way like I've often fucking wore me good clothes Sunday clothes to work on a Monday because I was like actually, 
I wasn't too. I'm. I used to go home in fairness on a mon on a Sunday if I was out early because I just fucking didn't want to be sick for Jimmy because I I was I got on really well with you him. respected like, him. I, yeah, he was very good to me. Like you know, and fucking took he was some piss taker. Like he, the crack lad. Like the minute I got in the van in the morning crack was unreal and like out that evening and there's days like and then so we go into the sites different sites we work on say the plumbing crew that used to be on it was my best friend at the time Stevie Stevie Collins the neighbours so like we were just getting up going to work and next thing you're with the boys all day so having to, to fucking carry on like the crack mm. was like I don't know I'd love to know what's the crack I don't think the crack is the same on the sites anymore do you know I suppose everything the fucking health people and safety are, and health and safety and no there's nothing wrong with health and safety yeah no a lot of people aren't family or friends. And it's probably, I don't know, it's just, I don't know, the, the mess and it was probably new. Do you know that that boom was like, everyone there was, was so much it. pressure now though. You know, yeah. back then you just got it done when you got it done. And that's it. Now it's, yeah, look, everything is fucking formats and fucking yeah. time scales and big money. And look, at the, the cost of everything at the moment there's no time for fucking around. Whereas no. I, there was money to be made at things mm. back then. Like, so. If you put yourself under pressure, you were making a killing. Oh, now you're yeah. just making a wage. Yeah. And I went to the buildings for a while. Did you? Yeah, I got ran after three weeks. Go away. Yeah. What were you doing? Just labouring. Labouring. Just labouring. And Getting I abuse. got in trouble for just messing. Cleaning up in the evening. I got into one of the bins and pretended to row across the <laughs> puddle. And uh, uh foreman said to me one day he just shouted across and he goes um, is there a shovel in there and I was labouring for the plasters you know you're bringing in the buckets yeah. of stuff and he just goes is there a shovel in there and I went no and he just walked over and he goes come here come here and I didn't know what was going on here I just left the timber I got burnt out with the timber and I was in, went doing this job where I was getting about 600 500 600 euro a week and I'm used to getting Fucking 800, 1,000. I was just yeah. showing whoever I was working for, fuck you, I'm going to leave. And this lad was there, when I ask for a shovel, you fucking look in every house until you find me a shovel. I'm laughing into his face yeah. like, yeah. dickheads. Uh, yeah, look, I, I be, and see, I probably would have been a bit like you too as well. I I would, I'd be kind of a bit like that as well. I'd be a bit, you know, I'd take the It's fight. annoying when you're, you know you're working hard and you're there thinking, look yeah. at this petty shit like. And this shit, this like giving me shit for yeah. I'm lucky, right? I'm not being I'm inspired. I'm lucky I didn't I didn't get that much shit. I I look, hope so and your father was the boss. Yeah, well see he wasn't because um would have been working on his sites, but I never kind of I would have worked with Jimmy. Jimmy was my boss and do you know no, mm. I would have at times then say it was funny, I didn't I was like, I would have loved going with the different crews. Like, I would have done a bit with all of them, say, first. And then I would have got a bit of shit. Like, you know, but it was, I actually was, was, wasn't was taking the piss out of, like, you know, mm. I, well, they were taking the piss out of me, but not too far, say, yeah. you know. So, but when I was with, yeah, when I was, I suppose, I did, I was lucky. I had one, there was one site, um, we are doing this job in Ballygallan Stud. This was like, I was down there for fucking years, right? But I don't know if you heard of a builder called Billy Doolan. No. He's a fucking like tyrant. Like and we used to, he used to come on to the sites and he lads would be just running everywhere. But like that dog, a fucking dog like even if you're after making him a fucking million in the day, he'd fucking dog you. But I came in I we were subbed in. He or he was over all the buildings except the electrical because we done the maintenance there already and Jimmy was well in with this stud and the guy that owned the stud farm was a fucking multi millionaire who got on well with us. He just wanted G in there. Doing he wanted us. It was that was it. Like he said, listen, I want Jimmy to do it and I don't blah blah blah. So Doolin used to be coming in and everyone would be afraid of him and I'd see him coming and I'd be like winking at Jimmy and I'd be like, Morning Billy. And this he wouldn't speak to me and I kept that at every fucking day. I was like, Morning Billy. Like with that little kind Did of... Did he mind? It was driving him cracked. And he said to Roy, Roy Strudwick, who owned the place one day, he's like, that cheeky little fucker, I'm going to give him the road. And Roy was there, I know, I like Evan, keep him here. And then Roy came out and says, Billy is going mad. He said, like, Leave him he's, he's like getting tick every... He's coming in saying, you're fucking saying hello to him every morning. And I said, oh, she just looks sorry. I was only saying, he was like, oh no, keep it going. He was like, <laughs> he said, so I was like, every morning. So Billy then... Billy, he would have like kind of give me a little bit of a, you know, not much, bit of a dog, but 
Jimmy went off on holidays for two weeks, right? And I was looking after the job. I would have been young at the time and we had other electricians subbed in. But when Jimmy was gone, there was this kind of a, we're building a pool house now. This is this is how rich this Roy is. like, mm. And so there was a big change when Jimmy was gone. So there had to be stuff pulled out and stuff go in and we got new plans and all this shit. So the foreman came down and gave me the plans and I just went at it straight away. And I got it done fucking really quick. I had the lads in. And next thing, Doolan comes in the next day and he was roaring and shouting. He's like, those fucking cables meant to be in here. They're meant to be tr trenches dug up here. And I said, like, Billy, that's all done. I have it all done. He's like, what? And he's like, have you this done? Have you that done? And I was like, yeah. And I was like, he looks at me. Mm. And he walks off then and he goes into Roy and he goes to Roy. He's not the worst of them. Get rid of that big. <laughs> Keep him. <laughs> he's like, so he was that. So, yeah, no, going on the site. So I was lucky enough. I never got too much, too much shit. And like I said, then sometimes I was on my father's site as well. So so how long but, did you stay plowing away at that? Six years. And then I decided to go out to Oz for three months on a holiday. Three of my friends were going and... I decided with about a week and a half before they were going that I'd go. There was a bit of a break in work with um, it was work getting quiet and you just decided no, nah, just burnt we, out. We were it. the next phase was starting in Ballygallan, but there was a maybe a six week gap. And at the time I had a bit of shit going on with to be honest with myself and Abby's mam and what age were you? Roughly? 22, 22. 20, 22. So you're only young. Very young, yeah. yeah. And the kind of I was probably, I didn't realise it, but I was probably stressed out as fuck, like, because we were, like, to and fro over this this baby, and mm. we were, hadn't been together. We were together for a little while, and we, you know... Yeah, tough for tough, a young person. And mm. we probably, like, both of us could have fucking handled it a little bit better. <clears throat> but anyway, I one day, I was fucking just, was kneeling down in the garden for, like, doing a garden light, and Jimmy was like, here, listen, you're there for fucking ages. Like, what's wrong? And he knew everything that was going on, like, and he was like, he said, listen, you should, because I had, the boys were going to Australia the boys were going to Australia I was on to him John Cupton and he said why don't you fuck off the boys for a few weeks next phase of the job is starting in you know, six weeks I'll, by the time it gets up and going you'll be back and that'll be all sorted so I said don't know I don't know I'm not you know, I don't know if I want to go travelling this and that and so then I was like talk to the boys and I said oh here fuck it I'll go for three months and well it was like yeah about 12 11 or 12 weeks they were going for it they were coming back for their sister's wedding and uh, so yeah so that was when I decided I'd fuck off the Oz then for three months and, and what was that like? sure it was fucking mental to be honest until say we had we landed now I mean right at the time we were quite fucking green I went to Australia with like literally a t-shirt I was like sure Australia's warm that's it I didn't fucking think anything about mm. bad weather in Australia. I never heard and next thing we were even Melbourne. It was the fucking winter over there. I was like, where the fuck did I have to drop me off? I honest <laughs> to God was fully sure I was in the wrong country. Why was it cold? It was fucking freezing. Really? I mean, yeah, down in Melbourne it can be cold at times. And I hadn't even a fucking jacket and it was the wettest. I was like, are you serious? This is Melbourne. So I got off. I was like in the airport. I rang the lads and I was like, the fuck's the story and they were like, oh, that weather's terrible here <laughs> and I literally had a pair of jeans maybe a jumper and a couple t-shirts and shorts that was it like that was fucking so I went out jumped too in the taxi too much home away Evan fucking too much Al Stewart yeah. fucking Can't. <laughs> living fucking living the life up there and Brax and all the boys yeah. so I thought it was like you know I just go over with the wife beer and shorts and fit in but no so I just bought a few clothes had yeah. your job lined up uh no, we weren't going to really work. We were Crack. going. Crack. We were going to. So we we basically we travelled. That was it. We got on the east coast and we went down a little bit towards was it Adelaide? Went down towards Adelaide for a week or two, then drove up to Melbourne and all the way up the coast basically. So that was we just wanted to do the east coast. That was the plan. Get to the top and say we would have done a week or two in Melbourne and the little towns. We done all the coast, all the little small towns, and we went to in Sydney and then we got up as far as Brisbane after a couple of weeks and then there's a guy from Thomastown the Rock Fenley um, Cheers Thomastown's great for the names Fucking legend wait I, I like I don't know I was actually every one of my mates has a nickname and like now Rock is a generate he's like he actually 
The Rock is would have been best friends with my my boss in Ireland, and but The Rock is the kind of guy everyone from Thomastown goes through The Rock over in Australia. It was this thing like everyone knows The Rock. The Rock's a character. He's a kind of mm. fucking. But if you met this guy once, he's a he's a fucking hero. Like he's plays music and he's like fucking plays the bow on and a pizza box he's you know the dude. he's the fucking dude and he loves partying so our, we were to I rang the rock and said look we're coming up to Brisbane oh, deadly look meet ya told me he'd meet me when I get there I ring him when I got to Brisbane and he'd tell me where to meet him give me the address of the house so I was fucking trying to ring the rock for two days before we on the way to Brisbane I couldn't get through to him sure the rock was on a bender and we got to Brisbane and the lads were like is this fucker like does for he want our American to? fans that is a lot of drink oh, lot and drink. not a not, homosexual not exactly yeah, sorry thanks for clearing that yeah, one no up uh, I, I see I'm not used to the <laughs> the big audience I'm just used to talking <laughs> shit in Thomas you know in the polls so. but um, so we we parked up the car we're after buying this car right no f- so over there you have to have red jaw and you don't you've, it's all include your insurance everything is in, so we were like went into this cowboy and he's like Nah, this is grand. Here, I swear to God, it's a black marker and changes the oak and the oak, your grand drive on. So we just drove on, like we're only going to be there a few weeks for like chances. Mm. Of that. But we pulled in and then the fucking, no, I couldn't get through to the rock. And next thing we go down to O'Malley's bar on the main street of Brisbane. We said, look, we'll go in for a pint. And next thing in we walk and here he is by playing the bower on and just, Jesus, Kelly, I, I, I didn't know you were coming today. And next thing, kind of, Talked over the microphone like this. Are you staying? What are you doing? Yeah, and he's playing away. And next thing, finished that song, came down. Sure, that was it then. So we ended up staying four weeks in Brisbane, which was completely not the plan, like, mm. you know, so. Well, it must have been great fun. It was fucking brilliant. It was, and the rock is like fucking brilliant. And the crack is like. Were you just sure. dumping money out there, like? Dumping money, yeah. It was like fucking ridiculous. Like, yeah, it was, we, uh. Yeah, because we didn't work. We'd, like, but then before we went, we're all would have. I had a few pound, but then I got a few pound off mum and dad going off as well. Because I knew it was only for three months. So, and then, Are you delighted you went. Yeah, I am, and I'm not. Like, it wasn't life affirming. What? It wasn't the best experience of your life. No, I got fucking nailed out there. Then um, we were up in. Uh, I don't know if it's even because I had the accident right out there that it's. It was out there you had the accent? Yeah, yeah. So I was up in, we went up to Fraser Island. Have you heard of Fraser Island? No. It's the biggest, I think, sand island in uh, sand island in the world. And like, so you have to get a ferry out and you just go out and you spend two or three days out there camping, driving four by fours. It's fucking cool. It's a beautiful place. And there's all dingoes and shit out there. And you have to be very careful camping and this and so we went up there and we done our camp we headed out camping how many of you so there was, there's, the four of us went to Australia together right me Brendan Heafy Alan and Decky Kelly and uh, then we would have had about maybe eight or ten of us in the jeep so we would have got this four before jeep that gone on the ferry and then went out would have been probably two jeeps travelling together so we got there and we drove around the first day set up camp that night and then cooked up and we're like cook you'd be cooking that and you couldn't leave the fucking saucepans alone and that there because there was dingoes in the bushes and that and it's cool then you can't swim doesn't fucking sound cool to me uh, yeah probably fucking throw a different experience here like fucking everything and there's like you can't go into the water because there's fucking tiger sharks everywhere Brilliant. Uh, yeah so it's nice and friendly you know fucking safe as houses but um so that we stayed there the first night, had a fucking session drinking the goon. Do you know the boxes of wine? Like I think it's ingredients, eggshells or, or fucking fish eggs or something. It's fucking <laughs> rotten stuff. But like, but you drank it anyway. But it was twelve dollars, and you got four liters of wine, and you just were scuttered after it. Mm. So do you know, one or two of them had fucking sort you out. And uh, cheap night. But next day we got up. We got our itinerary, say we, we would have had itinerary either day, each day. So we'd done our bits and pieces. And then we drove, because it was all, like you'd be driving fucking through sand roads, through woods and all mm. this. So we parked up and... Wanted, How do you know where to go? Have you we guides? have a map. We or have a map. Maps. Yeah. And um, you kind of, yeah, look, it's fairly, it's not that big and that's... So it's, but are you a long way from hospitals and yeah. doctors? And yeah, yeah. Fucking... 
long way from everything like that. The nearest, so when we parked up, we did, we wanted to go to this place called Lake Wabi. And it's about, I think maybe, I don't know, is it a kilometre or two kilometres? You have to walk then into the wood. And there's big sand dunes into this freshwater lake. And we got in there and we're just chilling all day. Just had lunch and running up and down the sand dune, jumping in. And then basically, uh, we were, myself and Decky were going up the sand dune because there was a line of people up the top. There used to like maybe a hundred people. So, be, so the place is packed with people? Packed with people, yeah, packed. So and, like it's a party atmosphere. There's loads of people everywhere. Yeah, it's not, and it's not like, there's not a load of booze or anything in there because it's in the middle of fucking nowhere and you have to trek in during the day. It's just this beautiful place that you you trek in to see and like you have to walk through a wood down around the trail then into the bottom mm. uh, where the lake is and then up this side it's like just the sand dune up here and then you're up on top of the sand dune so you go up the sand dunes and run down and just fucking jump in and they'd line all across the top of the sand to dune to do it to do it and like there could be a hundred people running in and down we're doing it all day like so myself and Decky were going up again there was a group going up and they were a little bit ahead of us and we are kind of I swear to God, I was walking up the sand dune, and this is the God's honest truth, right? I went to Decky. Oh, fuck, man. Ooh. He said, what? And I said, did you get that bad feeling? And he goes, no. And I said, oh, I did. I said, I'm fucking, I'm going to fuck, come on. I, I don't know. I'm getting, I just, ugh, something. I swear to God, it was really? just this fucking shivers. I got up my spine, right? And you said that to him? I swear to God, you can ask Decky yeah. this. So I said, come on, we just fucking, we're halfway up, we ran down. And next thing I ran down, I slipped, bang, fucking, just belly flopped into the water, and it's like how, I, how, it's like how I got far of a drop. No drop. It was like I ran down here, said, "This is the sand dune. This is the water." I just belly flopped, slipped, and f- just as if I fucking ran across there and fell on the carpet, like no height, nothing. I just hit the water, and the neck went <laughs> back and broke my neck, and I was lying in the water, face down. It was like. Did you ever get a shock off electric fence? Yeah. But it was like that shock coming from the top of my arse, up my spine. It was like fucking hell. I was like, remember being in the water, like kind of shaking. So and you're face down in the water? Face down in the water. Conscious. Can't move. And in pain? More of electric shock and a bite on my lip. That's the only thing that was sore at that stage. But I couldn't fucking move. And I was like, what the fuck? I can't. Do you know what? Like, what? I wasn't in that much pain. I just I was after getting the shock, and I was. But when I hit the water, I came back up for a split second, and one of my other friends was in the water, and he seen me, and he's like, when he's after this was afterwards, he was telling me that because I'd be acting the fuck, you know, I'd be mm. a bit of a messer, and he said he seen me eyes, and he said, look, I, I know it's not physically possible, he said, but your eyes were just just going round in your head. He said they were just bang up and down. He said, and then they. I just remember being under the water, like say floating on top of the water, but I just remember holding my breath and just saying to myself, please fucking God, someone get me. And next thing, the boys just flipped me over and held me in the water. And I was like, they were like, you, you are right? So lads, I can't move. Were, were, were you like, like, were you frozen or just floppy? Just like this, just lying in the water, floating in the water, but they had me held to keep me yeah. up. So, and then, at this stage, like, there was no one holding my head or neck or anything like that. So, so they could have been doing more harm than... Yeah, but then... So they were kind of holding me for... They were like, what the fuck? And, but the boys, I think they just all froze. Do you know, it was just hell me there. Yeah, no one knew what to do. And then these two students, student doctors passed and they were like, okay, we need, you need to get them out. I was like, like they were like holding me down. I was like, it's fucking cold, lads. And I could feel the body getting cold inside me. Do you know, that kind of a way. But... So then they were like, they showed them how to lift me out. So they lift me out and they just put me out on the on the sand like this. And they put a bit of sand in around here. They kind of had an idea. It was after you know, breaking my neck or whatever. So Did you? I had no fucking clue. And then I was on the line. I was like, what the fuck is wrong with me? Like, I'm not that so... I was a bleep, bit, bit my lip and it was stinging me. But the rest of me, I was just not moving. I had no pain. I was just in shock kind of. And Decky then... I was like, I was like, what the fuck? I was starting to get a bit worried. And Decky says to me, I swear to God, this is, because we'd laugh about this to this day. And he goes, you'll be grand, lad. 
And Dickie is like, he's you know, like country voice and he's like, mm. be grand lad. I often fell off a scaffold and got spinal shock for an hour or two, couldn't move and you'll be grand. So that would, you would be feeling better here. So that. I was like, <laughs> oh yeah, spinal shock, maybe I'll be okay in an hour or two. But then it was like, there was a crowd coming around. Then another doctor came and they were like, oh fuck, this lad's, this is not spinal shock, this lad's in bother. So paramedic came then and then basically, because we were there all day, it was starting to get a bit dark. So the, the, obviously there was an air ambulance rang because <clears throat> it was off offshore. So the ambulance had to fly from Brisbane to get me. So we're waiting for about four fucking hours. Jesus. Oh, it was a nightmare. And then. And what are you doing for that? Foil? Lying there and the boys had a foil blanket over me. And then just the lads are trying to keep me calm. So my three friends stayed with me. Two paramedic or two, the paramedic and the two students doctors were there. But then, because there's not but fucking dingoes and shit on this island, the dingoes were like popping their heads out of the ditch and the boys had to make up a little kind of a rag with a fire on it to fucking kind of, so they wouldn't come in at me and shit like that. I wasn't really aware of everything that was could going on. I was fully con- couldn't move a thing, lad. Only thing I couldn't move was my neck. I was broke. And I was could like... Could you feel anything? Nothing from me nipples down. Was it scary? That... No, I wasn't re like I wasn't overly scared because I was like I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I I didn't really think I can't really remember was I scared or not. I I, I don't think I was. But then I was like I got the the paramedic obviously gave me some paracetamol that to thin out my blood and that was and Stop then cotton so, or something yeah, because if with the compression on your spinal cord if there was a you know, thin out the blood so it doesn't cause more compression and do okay. more damage. So we would have, the lads obviously would have been like talking away from me and like and saying, oh shit, we need to get this lad to a hospital fast and blah, blah, blah. So I wasn't, would have been kind of keeping me calm and not mm-hmm. telling me. Decky's wise words were, the, you know, I was like, ah, I'll probably be grand then. I, was, I had this, I actually remember having this in my head. Please let Decky be right. I'll be some crack now if I just get up. Can I get up? What do you think? Do you know, but then like, then I start getting a bit of pain and the stiff, you know, I was like, yeah, could f- pain after two hours, three hours and the crowd, everyone is gone and you're just lying there and it's getting cold and you're fucking, then you're starting to get sore. And I remember then the helicopter, we seen the helicopter coming and the helicopter then basically would have, couldn't fucking land because of the sand dunes. So the boys had to get stretcher and they had to bring me up, which was fuck, on this steep sand dune that's loose. And it was pretty hard to get me up. But I remember, the one thing I can remember, they obviously gave me then, like, they would have given me medication that to chill me and take the pain away. But what I do remember is, right, and they put a neck brace on me and there was a little thing sticking out of the back of the neck brace and it was driving me fucking mental. I was, like, freaking out with your man the helicopter. I remember that until he knocked me out. I'd say they just gave me something to just knock me out then and... Then I remember. So what was the last thing you could remember? I could remember lying in the helicopter just While like, flying? When flying the night. Like and you're in the back of the helicopter and I'm like, oh fuck this shit. Anyone is. with you? No, it was only the paramedics. The, the my friends couldn't own. go. My friends couldn't go with me. There wasn't that much space in the helicopter. It was like fucking, you know, I was like just shoved into a, like a little. And they it, had a what, 20 hour journey back? No, it would have, I think. Was it, I don't know, four hours maybe or five hours in the helicopter? I'm not sure exactly because I was just gone the next thing into Princess Alexandra Hospital in Brisbane. So, But you can't remember that? I do, yeah. I remember coming around then in the hospital in like being brought in. Kind of when it's coming out of the helicopter, I was, I remember, I can't fucking remember. Did we land on the roof or did we land on the, in, the, in the yard? But I remember coming in and coming around then in A&E and... There was a sound nurse there and she was kind of trying to explain to me what happened. What and was she saying? She said, look, you're after having a spinal injury and that it is very serious. And she said, first of all, you're very, you're lucky to be alive. So, and I'm like, spinal injury? I, to be honest with you, I wasn't even fucking sure. Like, spinal injury? Like, tell him, like, she's like, you know, you could be paralyzed. Like, and I was like, what do you mean paralyzed? And she's like, can you know, like, you know, we'll see now, do you know, it can go different ways, but do you, know, you could end up in a wheelchair out of this. And I was like, what? I know. And then she was like, no, look, we have to wait and see tests and all this. And so then they would have then start kind of 
going through the procedures, whatever had to be done. But you had no family, no friends, no, not, totally on your own. Totally on my own, except that nurse, she was very nice. Do you know, it sound, she was just a fucking, I can, I can remember, I can't, I, I don't remember her name now, but I, I remember, I can remember her face and she, because she was that kind to me and she was, you know, just hanging around was, and then inside in this room in A&E, there was no one there, only me and it was fucking sh- lights and fucking stuff everywhere. It was, then I was starting to get a little bit, oh shit, this is like, and then the surgeon, the lad that was on, he was a fucking ignorant bastard. He was, and they were doing tests and then basically after a while, then they were like, okay, we have to get him, move me to the next bit and get the, you know, the whole halo on and fucking screw into your head then. Had you have an operation before this? No, this was... St- well, this was just to stabilize me okay. before the operation. So then... Is this the same day? This is all in the same night, yeah. And then they would have, say, put me up into ICU or was it H- HDU or ICU? I think HDU, High Dependency Unit. Um, put me on this... Well, I would have been kind of an A&E, kind of like, you know, the... the the ICU bit there and I, I would have been on the bed, the rotating bed and they were put on the big halo and screwed into my head. I don't know if you can see there's little marks. See? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's where they drilled in and like, I can remember. That, that's drilled in on the first night? On the first night and I can remember and you want, is that tight enough? And they're, whatever they were doing, like whatever to do with the traction and I can remember like, I can remember certain things I can really remember, you know? And I was like, I can hear, Hurt. No, nah, that I was morphing that with my head then at this stage. Like, I was like, mm-hmm, what's going on here? Like, I literally can remember being just oblivious to things going on. Like, do you know, and you're thinking back afterwards. So when can you remember being very coherent and knowing shit is real? So this is another freaky fucking thing, right? So they operated on me and... Be, be, without permission, like... Oh, yeah, they would have got my permission. It would have got... Like I was, you know, in my early 20s. So they had to do what they had to do. Yeah. So. Had no, you talked to your parents? Yeah, I would have. Um, was it talking to dad or mom like this? The day I got the phone call home, obviously, that I'm after having a bad accident. I think that, I think it was on the phone to dad and I was like, um, was I on the phone? I think I would have been. I can't remember exactly if I... Well, obviously we had to give the go ahead and mm. I would like, look, you have to do what you have to do. There's no other option. And dad would have been, he'd be good in this, you know, making decisions if stuff like that. So obviously they got the go ahead to do it. And then I remember coming around, um, I was in ICU in the bed and next thing. Post operation. After the op, yeah. So. I mean, what was what did they do? So the, what they done was they went in here from the front. There's a bit of a see the mark on my neck. Oh yeah. So they went in there, slit that there, went in. So I had shattered C six completely. My vertebrae shattered that and fractured C five and C seven. And so I had to get a titanium plate. So I have a titanium plate in me in here with C six, and then five and seven just healed themselves. You know, it just went back into just with the, that one file. Oh man, like I didn't even fucking hurt myself. Like I fell into water and bang. Like, and I'm not going to lie, I jumped off the roof of a place two week, two couple of nights beforehand over a wall into his pool. Like, and I didn't, like, you know, I was, we're scuttered. Do you know what I mean? Like my time wasn't yeah. that day. It was fucking, my time was up then that fucking, but my time wasn't up because. Yeah, I know what you mean. But so you woke up, you had your operation. Up, so I was there and I could hear this like, beeping and you know you can hear the machines that, and I was lying there and I was like she was like Evan Evan I could hear this voice and it's like I remember opening my eyes and I could like this all the lights and shit and Alex I was like and I looked over it right and this no word of a lie so a girl that used to babysit me when I was younger that lived two miles up the road from home was a nurse in the hospital didn't even know Stop. and she was after getting word Caroline Lanigan yeah and she was there when I woke up in the in the and it, that was there and I was like fuck and she's there you alright and I'm here oh fuck so that was brilliant to, to yeah, hear it was nice. from home yeah it was nice right so she was very good to me when I was there right but then I got moved down well, why was the surgeon a prick by the way the surgeon was just fucking ignorant and he said to me right I asked him like 
you know, what does this mean? Like he gave me the, you have, um, like remember I'm young at the time, I know fuck all about accidents or fuck all about injuries or what, what shit is out there for people, right? Mm. And he's like, you have uh, C6, quadriplegic, tetraplegic, ax, blah, blah, blah. This now he's like, look, I kind of said, listen, I'm from, from, from country, I'm from Ireland, will you? Can you kind of like tell me, you know, like in layman's? And he's like, he was, I remember him being real rude and ignorant about it. And he's like, kind of, you stupid fucking idiot. Like he said, you, you're fucking, you're paralyzed. You're going to be in a wheelchair kind of thing. This is, and I was there, no, no. I said, I, I tried barely, I didn't hurt me. It's like, I barely fell into water. I said, it can't be. And he was there, he kind of got a bit like, I'm doing me, you know, a little bit, a um, mm. little bit narky. And it was late. And, but I said, I was like, he, I was like, no, no, the company goes, yeah. And I said, could you do me a favor? And he goes, what? And I swear to God, right? I said to him, could you go out that fucking door and send someone in here that knows what they're talking about? <laughs> and right, how I remember that was when I was in the hospital in the bed, a couple of nurses came down and oh, you're the lad that said it to doctor such and such. <laughs> and uh, fair play to he's one bad bastard. Do you know, they, they were delighted that and sure I was just, you know, 20 year old, 21, two year old Irish chap, the nurses fucking I was, and then cause Caroline was there all the, I was like a little baby. I was like fucking, they were minding me. Like. So when you woke up and the Lanigan girl was there, did yeah. she tell you what, the story yeah, was yeah. she was like look I've been talking to home and stuff like that they're trying to organise getting home obviously they have to get or getting here they have to get visas blah de, blah and then yeah it was I was like fuck but then right that night because there's quite a few people from Brisbane and are from Thomastown in Brisbane so maybe the next day they, so it took me out of high dependency unit and put me into the next one level down and uh, said it would have been four beds on either side but it was like you were being monitored like a lot and next thing there was a family from Thomastown the Cunninghams Paddy Cunningham and the family out in Australia they were all into me that night there was 12 people from Thomastown around the bed the Chandlers Barry Chandler the Rook uh, Paddy Cunningham his wife his daughter son it was, it was 12 actually people from Thomas down there. It was fucking mad. Like, and it was, do you know, the, they brought me in McDonald's and do you know, anything but that. What, 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 like, what could you do? Nothing. I couldn't fucking do nothing. I was gone from the chest down and I couldn't even, I was like, I was fucking. Could you move your hands? No. I was so, I was, yeah. So after I was like, at this stage, I would have been probably able to do this. No wrists. My wrists were gone. From my wrist down was gone. And my from my nipples that were gone. I, at this stage, I couldn't move my head or anything because I was so sore from, like, I was like... Were you in a lot of pain? Oh, fuck, yeah. And what what do you feel? Nothing. Nothing. How's Pins your head, and needles. What's your head thinking? Like, where is your head then? Like, what are you saying to yourself? What's I'd your grand, internal day I'd be like? fucking grand. I would be bad. Like, they're telling me this is, like, you know, paralyzed. You're going to be paralyzed, buddy. Right? Is this what they're telling you? Yeah. But in a very, you know, good way, a nice way. I'm blessed I had the accident in Australia. They're very positive. Like, you know, you're after having this, this is where you are, but this is what we can do. And at this stage then, they didn't, the operation went really well and it was incomplete, which was massive. If it had to be complete, it was like the spinal cord was completely severed. And I, But then it was incomplete. They didn't know what damage was done. But there's a possibility I get a little bit of recovery back. Do you know, functional that I'd be able to get my arms working, hopefully, and, maybe get some finger movement and but not looking good from the chest down kind of thing so like I was like I had to be fed I had to be everything brush my teeth How, what was that like mentally not good not mentally I was okay mentally what did like, you struggle with the most mentally of not doing for yourself I don't know lad. at that stage that stage I don't really know. I are, was you, just, are you focused on, I'm just going to get better? That I, at this stage, I couldn't even think. I didn't know what the fuck. I had no, like, it was two days before my friends were able to even get back down to me. And before I knew what, I didn't even know what was going on because I was still, you know, it was a couple of days you're morphing down with it. Like, and like, I remember the day my friends got there and I was like, Brendan, I was like, oh, that doesn't, you know, I was fair glad to see you. And Brendan was like, I remember him opening a bottle of Coke and just, do you know, because they would, I love a fucking can of Coke or a bottle of Coke, right? And 
I uh, I would have been, you know, at the hospital, be like, you know, water, water, mm. water. And Brendan came in, he's like, they're here. And he gave me a sip of coke. And I was like, I couldn't, he had to give it to me. Like, and I, like, and then I was like, I could barely move like this to get, suck out the straw. And like, I was completely fucked. Like, and then I got kind of chatting to the boys. Like, and I was like, what the fuck? Is this not good, is it? And they're saying like, I mightn't walk again. And when they, I kind of like, the lads are like, mm, yeah, this is not good. Like, and, but then I, I didn't, it wasn't ready. Do you know, at that stage, I was like, was the, like, the 20 so much going on, the yeah. mortal brain doesn't process that. He wasn't fucking thinking about the long, the long haul or he was like, I honestly swear to God, I was actually thinking, these don't know me. I'll be all right. I'll be grand. I'm, I'll, I'm fucking, I'll be okay. I, and then I remember saying to the lads that when nurse came over and she had, the nurse had called the boys in and they were, they were giving them the lowdown like of how bad things were. And the boys, I could see the boys coming out like, and they're like, mm-hmm. no, you might be okay. Do you know what I mean? Like trying to keep the best up. But I could see it in the boys' faces. And he, if he can't lie for shit. And Alan would be, Alan would be like a really solid friend, right? And I could see it in Alan's face. I remember him coming in, he was like fucking, do you know, the face gone back in him. He was like, oh shit, he's fucked. <laughs> kind of, so... That was kind of, I couldn't really think, I didn't, I was, all I was like, okay, just what do I do next? Like, how the fuck do I get home? That was my biggest worry. Who did you, who did you want to see the most when you were in hospital? Who did, whose face did you want to see coming in the door? I was pretty happy when just my sisters came in the door. Well, mom and dad and my sisters, like I was, because, and then I was like, didn't want to have to fucking bring him to Australia for this shit. Like, you know, and but when I seen him, I was, the relief was like, okay, now, now we can go probably forward. go forward. Yeah. And what the fuck do I have to do? Like, because it was, it was so, I was so shook that like, it was, I wasn't say, I wasn't life and death. Like, but say at the start, it was like, maybe, do you know, it's not good. He's that bad. But then when I say, I remember saying to dad in the phone, dad rang me, goes, when I came around after speaking to Carolyn, and he's like, I yo like they're they're not saying it, they're saying it's not good. And I said, look, and I can very remember this. I'm fucked, but I ain't gonna die. And then he said, that's grand. Well, look, we'll he said, just you know, do what you have to do, blah blah blah. And then I was talking to the rest of the family and fucking everyone's ringing me and you know What 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 did it take to get from there to on a plane home? Oh fucking a lot, of, a lot of hard work because first of all, they told me that I wouldn't be strong enough to travel home for at least three months, right? And I was like, no way am I staying for three months. And it's funny, I said to Dr. Leslie there, I'll be going over here in a fucking month, I'm telling you now, right? I, one day we were talking and that was grand. When, like, Don, then I had nowhere to go in Ireland because Don Leary had a fucking, as they still do, backlog down the road, couldn't get people in and they told, the Irish kind of HC told me, don't come home. That's basically, there's not a bed in Dunleary. You'll be put into a ma- the matter. And thankfully, right, because we were building, this is like, do you know, certain things happen for a reason, I think, maybe. I don't know, maybe they just happen. And I put, the, do you know that question you asked mm. some of the lads? So we were, because we're builders, we were building a house, right, for one of the top dudes in the HS. Well, we're actually his partner. We were building a house for her in Greg Namana. And dad, yeah, dad was building the house. Like, and, and next thing, during this accident, so they obviously had to leave. So next mm. thing, we went to the HSC and was like, listen, don't come home, you're fucked. You know, like, there's nothing, you stay there and come home after Christmas. We, we try to get you into the system, get you a bed in six to eight months, blah, blah, blah. And I need to rehab now. And then, so this guy that was building the house for, he was like, leave it with me. And he rang dad. He's like, as soon as he can get on a flight, get him on a flight. Don't worry about the rest. Brilliant. And then. That must have been some relief. Unbelievable. For like for mom and dad. And then mom would have been at kind of a stage when the MS was starting to affect her. So this was, and this stress then on the MS is fucking like, you know, she did she would have had to use a wheelchair to travel a bit and that as well. And it was fucking, it was just a mess, you know? And then we, so then like the family is there, like, and you're, 
it's fucking like I never so my sister Becky right I, I'll never forget this so I was there to put me into the wheelchair like and I could see the family like, this is just, in Australia or when this is home? in Australia because my mum and dad and my two sisters come out to me right and was it hard to get to a stage where you were in a wheelchair Man, I was being held up in a wheelchair. Like it was like I couldn't sit in a wheelchair; I just fall over. Like so, they had me strapped to the back of it. And were you in pain every time they moved? Ah, oh, fucking horrendous! It was like oh, so every time they moved me, lad, it was horrible for a couple of weeks. I mean, absolutely horrible, oh, yeah. absolutely horrible. And so, I remember one day they moved me, and it was like oh, I can't. I think it was after getting the the big frame off my head, right? And it was like. But then they had me on the neck brace. So if you took off the neck brace, I was just gone over like this, like, you know. And if you took off the strap off my chest, I'd just fall onto my knees. I'd be sitting in the chair, but I had no core stability. So we then, yeah, my sister, I was like, oh, can you just wipe me? I was just, can you just wipe my head there? One day, just my sisters were there. And she said, oh, yeah, yeah, of course, of course. She went to go up, wipe me. And I said, ah! Start is my sister. She just start roaring, crying. But I just start laughing. Like I wasn't even messing with her. Like do you know. <laughs> and she was fucking. She bawled her eyes out. And yeah, and it was like, and I, it was fucking brilliant. But uh, I, I remember. Do you know. And next thing, I said, look, we're just gonna have to fucking get on with this and whatever. So basically, then the family they were really involved. The hospital really involved the family and like say they would have been. So they get me up every morning and they get the family in. I'd be up to physio and down to OT and I can't do jack shit now. They're pushing me around. But I remember they put me in the wheelchair. This is still in Australia. This is still in Australia about a week after the accident, maybe two weeks after the accident. And they start and send me up to physio. And they put me into the chair one more. Now I remember I can't do nothing with my hands. And your mom was like, physio, go out the door, up the top of the corridor, go left. And That's what she asked you to do? Told me. And I was like, what? I said, I can't fucking... I said, you have to feed me this morning, my breakfast. I can't lift my arm. Like, at this stage, I'm, my, arms, my arms are like this, like, and they can hang down by the wheel. And she goes, you're not going to have any sympathy here. She said, I'll show you where it is today, but you make your own way back. And, like, the physio brought me down that evening. And I was like, is she fucking serious? Like, and he goes, look, she's unreal. She's a savage. They're brilliant. The nurses were brilliant over there. And then I came back the next day, the next evening. I said, sure, I'm not going to push myself up there tomorrow. And she was there, you fucking will. And, like, I remember... Just I barely I could barely move my arms like an inch and I hear a wheel. So I like but she's a like, part of your physio, she said. She said, if it takes you three hours, no problem. She says she said, if it takes you three hours, turn and come straight back then for your dinner. Like, do you know this kind of it was like Were no, you able to move? Nah, it was barely, but then you'd get someone at sea and they'd give you, Oh, do you want to push or whatever? And that was but it was tough, kinda not tough love. They were brilliant. The fucking nurses and doctors were brilliant over there. What was it like getting up on the plane? In the in Australia After, to come home. Co- Grand lad was first class. It was, uh, we got first class um, home, myself and, so my parents and my sisters had to go home then after about three weeks and I would have had to stay with everything organised that I'd fly home the following Saturday. It was to get flights, couldn't get flights, you know, to suit everyone and to get my flight, get me home, we either had to take out 10 seats out of an ordinary plane and put a medical room at the back of a plane for me or put me first class and send two paramedics with me. Is that what happened? So I got first class, two paramedics flew out from Amsterdam um, with their in part of my holiday insurance. They came out and then stayed for a day or two with me in the hospital there and then flew me back to Ireland. First class from, I got first class to Germany and then I got on an air ambulance from Germany to Dublin. So we... um. That, that was must a, have been weird. That was a tough journey, boy. Because the, the toughest thing about that was because I was going to be traveling for two, two and a half days, that they bunged me up. So, because I had no control of anything, internals, bowels, bladder, all that was like... None? Gone, yeah. So like, it'd be like not working properly and stuff. So And th- when you say bung me up, is that, is that like what it sounds like? It, uh, you can't gimme go. Stuff, gimme stuff, yeah, that I can't go. So the killer thing, when I got back the pain, when I got back to Dublin... I was completely caught up yeah. and then, you know, it took a couple of days, like that was a fuck, and then you're, you don't know what's hurting you really, you just, know, sig- you're, you just yeah. know you're fucking, and like the first week back in Don Leary was, that was, that was fucking tough. Like, you so know? That, all that probably took the joy out of actually landing home, did it? I'll never forget by hearing the two dubs when they opened the door of the air ambulance and I was like, 
Ori Bono Starry, do you know? And it was like, oh man, I fucking last time I would have been it was up in Dublin and all Ireland or something like that. And it was like being fucked over. Was it a great it feeling? It. Oh man, it was like I just looked at him and I just said, Oh man, it's so good to hear your voice. And then they put me in the ambulance and brought me on out to the matter. But then that night in the matter by all oh, the pain. Because they put me onto just a random fucking bed with like no air mattress, no nothing. And I had all these things in Australia. And I'll never forget, I was in some pain. And then that was a Friday. And next thing they decided they weren't going to move me till Monday because they didn't take people in Dunleary on a Monday. So I was like, right, Dad, get onto your buddy in the HSC. And next thing we made a call. And he was like, get him out of there. So an ambulance came. It was actually, I was fucking blessed. They got me out to Don Leary. Now the consultant out in Don Leary was a little bit pissed off because they didn't take people on a Friday. But I was, the bed was free because, but that person was gone home, but they weren't just taking people in till Monday. And I was like, I would not stay in the matter. I was like, get me. I was just in, then I was tired and I was, I was little bollocks. Do you know How long were you in Don Leary? Nine months. What si what was your there had to be a moment that you the realization of everything hit you. Well the real one lowest. so the realization hit me one night in Australia. Um I wanted to get out of bed and I couldn't get out of bed and family were all around me and we had to call a nurse because I had to be hoisted every time I wanted to be moved like so I asked and it was after seven or eight o'clock or something. And you know, no, no, if in your condition, you, you're you not allowed out of bed until. And I said, What? I'm fucking 22. Like, you can't tell me I can't get out of bed. And she said, But we don't. You know, I didn't understand they didn't have the staff. To, so I was getting a bit upset and I was like, Get me the fuck out of bed. You know, and I was getting a little, probably a bit ratty. And then the lads would have been there maybe. And no, the lads weren't around that night, but my family were. Mom and dad, next thing I got into the chair and I was thick and I was like upset. And I remember going outside the front door. I can I can't remember. I remember, yeah, we were all going out and kind of you know the the back part of where we would have been in the hospital. You could go outside an area there and was it wasn't the main entrance, but there would have been a lot of traffic going in now. And, and I got upset and I actually remember literally crying for two hours. In, and Dad pushed me around the corner and said to the lads, the sisters, and I could go on back inside. And I, and I remember being actually, this one, I can remember my t shirt just being soaked from tears, do you know, for two hours. And I swear to God, right, I got it out of my system. Do you know, like sometimes you just have to mm. have a fucking cry and it just relieves you. And after I had that relief, I was like, well, because like, I couldn't really wipe myself, I was like, uh <laughs> this like and next thing wiped me eyes bring me back in I went back in and got into bed and I got up the next day and went out and that was it just you made the decision fucking I have to do what I have to do and I remember dad just sitting over waiting for me just fucking just get out of my system and yeah the next day I was just I went down and just went to physio and just fucking went. and when you were in Dunleary is that just physio 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 Basically Dun Leary. So when I got back to Dun Leary first, I was first of all, I was after being in like the state of the art hospital in Australia and I got back to Dun Leary and I thought it was like, do you know what the fuck? Peru. <laughs> yeah. I was like, <laughs> after being dropped off in the third world country here, lads, why is there no Is it that different? Oh fuck, man. Like this room, I had a room. See this room? I probably had twice the size of this room in Australia, right? And I had my own little kitchen, a bathroom, but there was four of us in the room. So it was a massive room. We had every, like fucking flat screen TVs, like this 20 something years ago, right? And then I came back to Dunleary. One telly at the end of the ward, beds, single beds together that you'd be lucky to get the wheelchair in and out between. And then just different. But the hospital was like a fucking, like an old convent or something. And that was a bit of a like, and then it was a different setup with the nurses and doctors were not as, you know, in Australia, anything is possible, anything is possible, anything is possible. Here it's like, now you're fucked. Do you know, honest to God, <laughs> literally you're, that's it. And me and- Did you feel fucked? E never, f maybe a little bit fucked, but not fucked fucked. Like, you know, when you're spending a lot of time on your own? And I you're didn't. in your own head. I wasn't spending a lot of time on my own though. That was the thing, right? I was in the hospital. 
it's fucking go, lad. It's up. You're awake at seven o'clock in the morning. You're up. You're getting showered. You're going down for breakfast. You're physio. You're OT. You're in the gym. You're fucking. So did you did you get yourself out of your own head? What like, you did you focus on getting to work? I just yeah. I just focused on, to be honest, lad, right? And in, in life in general, with me, I just go and do shit, right? I don't think things, overthink things. I'm not an overthinker, if you know what I mean. So I didn't, I wasn't one of the people. You weren't thinking in the future? I actually thought, I know where to lie, I thought I'd be back hurling and playing soccer. In If I'm not ready in 12 months, I'll definitely be ready for the following year. That was my, in my little that I fucking know. And that was what kept me going for a while until... Mm. I realised, and then, do you know, at this stage I was back in Ireland, and the only thing that I had moving was a little flicker in this little baby finger. That's the only thing after that... that length of time? After four weeks, right? And I was back in Don Leary one night, and Dad was up, and I was in bad form, right? And he was like, did you try to move your feet today? And I'm like... Did you fucking ask me? Look, what do you think I'm up doing up here? And he's like, "Yeah, but did you tr- did you try?" And I'm like, "I fucking tell you one thing. You're lucky I can't use my leg. Or like what? Like course I'm fucking trying. Show me. I'm sh- trying all day. Like and the next thing he pulled back to do it, move your. T-. And I was like, getting fucking queer take. Like um, like I, do you know? Yeah. What do you think I'm that kind of thing? And next thing, my my big toe on my left foot moved, and I'm like the two of us were looking at each other like what the fuck and next thing I done it again but now I had to see I was getting a lot of involuntary spasms then as well so like you spasms are crazy so I was like get the nurse get the nurse the next nurse come down she's like yeah look don't want to get excited but it's probably a spasm but I knew it wasn't a spasm now this is a stupid question yeah so what what does it feel like so like when you feel so you're feeling nothing or are you feeling I, I'm sizzling? So, or you so, feeling fa- so from my chest down, right, I was, I was touch, I, for, at this stage, touch wasn't, you wouldn't really feel anything. Like it was, you know, someone putting their hand on mm. you, kind of, kind of felt, there was not, there was, you know, just at this stage, this early stage, it was like, I'm not really feeling a whole lot. But then you'd start, it was like, do you know if I put a little pin in your arm? It was like yeah. if someone touched it, then you'd feel like a little pin touching it. Do you so know when you're I? looking at your toe, like you mm. just going, move! Like, I'm just like, like move! Fucking, do you know like as if you went as hard as you could to push that wall? Yeah. And you're not pushing it. That's what it felt like to fucking try Trying and move that little toe. And I knew I gave it two flakers, but I was wore out then. I couldn't do it for the nurse. And she was there, no, it could be spasm. I said, no, it's not. And then the next day I went down and my physio... This is one of the people that I give, I'd be still in a wheelchair only for her, right? Amanda Carty, right? Because um, when I got back to Ireland as well, I went kind of loggerheads with the consultant over, she wanted me doing wheelchair skills and all this shit. And I'm here, I'm fucking here to walk. I'm not going to practice and doing wheelchair skills. And unless it's me walking, I'm not doing it. And this wasn't, it's rehab. It's the best of your ability, whatever you had. So... Amanda was like, listen, just tell her you'll do whatever you do and I'll just do everything to walk, make you walk. And it was just, she was, you know, she was diplomatic and she was able to play me and got me going. But I, I tried to go down the next day and show Amanda that I had movement. But no, I couldn't fucking do it. And so, and I couldn't get it back for a day or two. And then I kind of rested. I said, I'll rest for a day or two. And then I went down the next day and I was like, listen, watch this. And next thing it moved. And she, then when she seen that, that's when the focus starts. So is. once you see that movement, that means the pathway there's is there. There's something there. There's a signal going through. There's something there. Now it could be very, it could be involuntary because of all the spasms. But when you can see the control and you can move it up and down. And now when I say move it, like that's like two mil. Do you know, like it's like that. You could barely see it if you blinked, you'd miss it. So that's how. So do you just keep working on that, working on that, working on that? Yeah, man. Just like. Do you know them videos you see of the lads struggling on the bar? Like to yeah. get to struggle on them bars, there's some work to go into that. Like I, how long, how long did it take for you to get up on the bar? Maybe six months, uh, maybe seven months, probably. 
to like to, to get the fucking stand and then like you have to remember every so you're put on this bed right next thing to bring you up maybe a couple of inches each day but the minute you come up a foot or two foot like your head is spinning you're dizzy remember you're on your back there yeah. for the last couple of weeks your head is spinning and you're in pain when you're doing all that I, I think I was weak. lucky right I don't I and I didn't know I'd done this right but afterwards so I I told myself I was stiff and I wasn't in pain and it's a really good thing I only found out afterwards because no I don't know why or did someone set this seed in my head because if you're in pain you're kind of like oh I'm in pain but if you're stiff I'm just a bit stiff yeah do you know so I had that I wasn't I wasn't, I was just taking it on and I was fucking going to get better. Do you know, that was my head. And then one or two people had told me I couldn't. So I was like, I'll fucking show you. Do you know? So we just kind of went at it and physio like every day. Like, I mean, like, like, do you know, I, to get to the six months, to the seven months that where like the even snap, I'll never, the, 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 the most pain I was ever in, I threw all my accident was the day that, so do you know the little physio beds that you would be on and say up in Shane's, hmm. right? And so I'm sitting, they had me sitting on the on the side of one of these, right? And I so first of all, I would have had to try, like I had no core stability. So imagine if you sat me on that table, I just fall straight over, like an infant baby, right? Yeah. That basically what happened, I was taken back to infancy. Do you know that's yeah. kind of what was in my head? And then I was thinking, well, look, worst case scenario, I'll fucking learn how to walk. You'll be able to walk by the time you're two. So this is what, <laughs> this is, I, this is the way I was thinking, honest yeah. to God. And yeah, so we just start like, and I mean like little movements in your feet and your hands. And then I had to get every day, get different massage because my hands were all locking up then yeah. and my legs be locking up and you just go through it every fucking day. And then you get a little bit stronger and you might be able to start doing weights. Like, and you're like, I'm can you remember what your, what you felt your greatest achievement was? <laughs> After that, um, Been from for to be able to walk, where you went, oh, I this is this is ha gonna happen. Well, I tell you, right, I so I had my accident on the twenty eighth September. Right? Actually, no, I'll tell you, yeah, sorry, I'll tell you when I stood. Right, so sorry, it wasn't so September, October, November, December. Right, and you have little goals. You have goal settings meetings every week. Right, and I would have been the first goal. Right was we got back and said, right, so to get home for a weekend, you have to be able to transfer. I said, oh, and you were here, yeah. Well, you'd be very lucky to be able to do it in a month. Uh, like, so when I say transfer, it means you're in your wheelchair, you put a board from there to the seat of the car and you have to kind of get yourself across and stuff like that. But as fucked as I was, right, I was only back in a in a week, but I was starting to get a bit of strength in my arms and I pulled myself and dragged myself. And I said to the nurse, Miss, can I go home on Friday if I may have to transfer? And she goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause no, and she said to that, look, no, he'll be lucky to be able to transfer in a month. And so I went down and got a fucking board. Like they showed us dad and me and the family how that I'd have to transfer. And dad would be coming up in the evenings and I'd go out to the car park. And so on the following Friday, I was able to transfer. Now we had help from dad and like, I mean, fucking drag myself around and like took me a while. And then they were like, oh, well, no, you're, there's other things I have to do as well. And I was like a loon. You said if I could transfer. And she was like, yeah, but do you know I did? So I actually what happened that Saturday is I got dad to come up Saturday morning to, to say he was just going to, now that I could transfer and I can't go home, that he was just going to bring me for a drive over to my aunt's house in Dublin. I didn't have an aunt in Dublin. So we drove to Kilkenny and I got home. But my friends had set up fucking ramps to come into the house and everything. And it was, oh, that like, was, man, on. it was, because I hadn't been home for 12, 14 weeks and that was unbelievable. Like to get in and just sit in my kitchen, just, it was, I was home, I was okay then. Yeah. That's, you know, and I, back progress. in my own, yeah, that was progress. And then that would have been a big thing. I remember getting home and I just remember the relief in my kitchen, sitting there, but then everyone was home to see me and my friends were Is up. Is that and, hard? Yeah. It's hard seeing your friends looking at you. How about your dog? I'll never forget. At this stage then, so me and Abby hadn't really got any relationship because there was, she was with a mom and I hadn't started to see her yet. There was a big fucking shit show there, right? And now once I got back out of the hospital, I'd been in contact with her mom. I was with so much shit going on, right? So then I basically contacted Ab's mom, say kind of when I knew I was getting out of the hospital, I said, listen, 
she, we had been talking before that and you know and look let me clear up this shit and we'll sort things out and we sorted things out then and so I was only but that was say would have been I would Abby would have I would have missed a lot of Abby's first year mm. you know, that's a killer for me I'll never get that back and that's something that's always kind of eats away at me but look we make up for it always and stuff <clears> but <throat> we the other thing going back yeah so that when I got home and the other thing was right I was trying to stand, right? And I was coming home at the weekends, right? They wouldn't let you do certain stuff in the hospital. And then I'd fucking get my friends to lift me out of the chair and try stand me. Like, the big boys would be, <laughs> do you know, it's like, an next thing to let me go for a minute, gone, do you know? And they're like, but I'd be pushing the boys on. But uh, going back to the, the thing, I'll never forget Hanners, right? When I was in Don Leary, right? And the lads, the lads arrived up, right? say that weekend it was actually two of my fucking best mates 21st back in Kilkenny the weekend I got back and I was actually getting on to them can I go back to the 21st in the hospital and they were like what you do you realize where you are and shit so a lot of the boys I arrived back in the starting by the time I got into Don Leary the lads come up on the Sunday or the Monday or Tuesday and, and Hannah's been my next door neighbor right? and we'd be very very close right and he walked in and Hanners is not one for fucking do you know it is what it is with Hanners and I could I could just see him like his face just went pale and he was like well and he just he couldn't really fucking talk I'll never forget he was the one do you know the other boys three of the boys had seen yeah. me and they had told the other boys and then it one was such him, a shock for him yeah because I would have said and did he, you find that a shock I kind of could I was like it's hard to see him because you were there, someone's looking at me different. He's looking like me as I'm fucked and I am fucked. And, but like, see, we would have been over the years, like say I would have next door neighbor and we grew up and we're at everything together. Like, and you know, I would have been a year, a couple of years older than him. Say, so I would have been a fucking hardier, a bit hardier than him until, you know, well, until he got to about fucking 17 or 18 and then he turned into a big fucking tank. And, but, do you know, he would have, he's, do you know when you're coming up along and I would have been a year or two older and you're always stronger than the younger lads and you'd be fucking, do you know, he would always tagging along behind me and that's how we got friends and, and I just remember he was, he's a big hardy cunt like, do you know, and next thing he looks at me and he's like, I would have been, no, I would have been tough enough, not, do you know, hardy, do you know, you're working on the buildings, you're playing soccer and hurling mm. and you're on the go the whole time and next thing, fucking, yeah, he sees me and bang. It's fucking lights out like he's like he's like I could see it in his face like saying he's fucked he's fucked and how long before you were home for good out of the hospital nine months nine months and you were walking no I was getting on my feet you could like stand stand and walk very slowly and I walked I, I walked out of the hospital it took me fucking a long time I walked out of the hospital on a zimmer frame from the bed out of the ward down the ramp and down to the car and that was a big thing, you know, getting, because I fucking said I'd walk out of here and I did walk out of there, but it took me a while. But <laughs> When you came home, moved home with mum and dad. Yeah. What was tough. new life Evan like? I was getting used to the, the hospital because... Um, Constant help. Everyone was there in the wheelchair and I'm, at this stage, I'm leaving the hospital. I'm the fucking, I'm the boy there. I'm, these, these, these boys coming in after their accidents, they're weak. I'm the strong lad, you know. Yeah. And next thing you go back and you're fucked and you're trying to get around the house. Now, we would have had a nice fine house at home. So I would have had the space and that, but um, they had... The, but you wouldn't have the, had the help? No, but that's where my, like, my sister's, like... Joanne and well look everyone at home was brilliant but my sister Joanne then just became like she's just unbelievable like you know since Do you need a carer? No I was able to at a stage I was able to be independent myself health wise and care wise and stuff like that and but I would have needed a lot of help just getting around and getting food you know I just fucking doing everything like you know like I just like, do you know, if you want to go out... But you still hadn't stopped trying to get your... It's always a constant, try to get better, try to get I'm better. I'm still at it, lad. I'm still trying to get better. So, do you know... Were I'm, you able to get back to work? I... So, the OT, because I was an electrician, the OT had this role in the ESB in Waterford coming up. So, I, I took two weeks off after I left hospital and then started work in Grace Jude down in Waterford. Doing? 
fucking accounts. I didn't, they just thought it was going to be some electrical thing and sent me down. And I said, oh, sure, yeah, I'll go down and see what it is. Next thing I was in accounts, processing invoices. Probably fucking go in the morning and look in your inbox and it was like 400 invoices. Like, no, just a fucking clatter, 100 people in this apartment, in this department, paying invoices for all of Ireland. And next thing I'm like, all right, okay, yeah, sure, look, I'll do it. I'm out of house, bloody. But I was at back driving at there because you do driving lessons up there. And I had a car, I, I, I came back like, and done, I got the car and fucking next thing start driving down to Grace Jew in the morning and next thing went grand, yeah, two, four hundred invoices start processing them, come down, go down and have your tea and you're after getting through 20 or 30 or 40 or whatever. Next thing come back up and another fucking 200 put into your inbox. <laughs> like, So I done that for six months and I was like, sorry. They, then they offered me a job and I was like, no, it's okay. It's like, it was kind of an internship kind of thing. I was getting paid for like, you know, hmm. Kind of a few pound, like just kind of, and yeah, then six months at that, then that was enough of that. Then I went into the Kenny Leader Partnership and I was in there for a little while. Didn't like that. I was kind of working. I was getting in and out with an engineer in there and then he left. I had to stay in the office the whole time. So then I was like, no, I'm gone. So at the time, dad would have had a pub as well. Um, dad had a pub over in Ballymurphy. It was halfway between there and her home place, right? And so he would have been living over there. And then this pub came up for sale in the middle. And we were like, geez, will we get that? So it turns out someone else, uh, do you know Philly Mac, Philly McBride? No. Car, he's a car, car fucking... Um, spare parts man down in Huggenstown fucking he's a character but he went and bought it but he'd have a load of money like you know and don't wait and bid shout out to Phil Phil big Philly Mac bride <laughs> but he's a he's a legend down our way yeah and well known but um, Philly Mac bought the pub and then we were, co that, we were coming out of the auction and was like do you know what are you doing with and basically that he bought it with another guy that dad would have known really when he goes do you want to uh, why are we interested and do you want to you know, we might want something to run it so we'd actually we ran that for three years so then we, yeah, we were in there for three years and then that was a fucking nightmare because that's a tough trade by the pub. Like that's a, you, you work hard and I was starting to be on my feet and I, I could furniture walk. So I was behind the bar and I was able to pull points and serve and, you know, I do it to a certain time and then when it gets busy, I just get out of the staff's way and it's kind of just organize. It was like, so then, but then in the meantime, so where I had my accident, right? In Australia, there was 22 accidents there before me. So when I left Australia, there was going to be a case. These solicitors come on. and So basically, long story short, that 2007, I had my accident. And then seven, this, I basically gave me information, gave a statement and left Australia. And next thing, these solicitors came back and said, listen, there's 22 fucking cases. This should have been shut down. This should have been done this. So we have a case. So... That kind of went on for a little while. And then in 2014, that came up ahead. So 2013 and 2014 would have been my toughest years because the stress of that, we had the pub. And then I had to go back to Australia for a case, which I might, so I wasn't, there was a load of different cases and they're all going to be starting coming. But then whatever, mine had the best evidence and I had been... Injured. Injured. Um, but now just everyone had these injuries. Like, I mean, like what they said to me in the hospital when I came in, they were like, oh, Lake Wabi, Fraser, another spinal injury. Like there was 22 proper serious accidents in this spa. And it was just whatever fucking way the land is laid and you just get caught. And so my case went, to, went ahead and we won, right? So the relief then, because at this stage, I didn't know where the fuck... Life was Cause going. Were you, were you and your family, were you under an awful lot of financial strain because of your injury? Yeah, like not really, because I tell you now, I'm, I'm very lucky that, so so the people at Thomas done done a fundraiser for me, right? And they raised 25,000 for me. And I used that for five years, 100 euro a week on physio for five years. And I was fucked on you for that, right? And in that time, I met this, this Ukrainian girl, or no, she was... She was from Ukraine, actually, yeah. She worked in the Spring Hill in Kilkenny. And she was after working with people with spinal injuries in 
before and she, at this stage you now if you touch me I was going into spasm so she started working with me and helped me would have to pay her so it was probably about a, a year or for five years I would have been doing that and then I was working a little bit and I was trying to be on disability but then at this stage fucking finances were, were running low it was in 2007 I had my accident so you, you know them five years were fucking touch and go for a lot of people but luckily look mom and dad would have do you know, had good, do you know, they would have that had... means. That means, yeah. And that probably didn't feel good for you. No, but at the same time, I wasn't getting a whole lot. It was the money that the, the, the town raised for me, right? And then, after that, then we would have... Say, then I got me a few bob, right? So straight away, I had the building background, right? And... I went, my sister's in college in Cork, right? And I seen what the fucking rents were there. So I was like, right, let's go down and look at some property in Cork. So basically then got in and done one or two houses because we had the building background, flipped them. Done them up. And done them up, flipped them, made a few pounds, then done it again and start doing it again. So you built a property portfolio? Yes. So now, look, I would have got enough, say, I was lucky I got a few bob to start it off. Do you know what I mean? But... I'm fucking lucky now much, that I went. How much did you get? Go on, would me. you believe, right? And this is the best. No thing one about has asked that question. I mean, <laughs> and you don't have to tell me. Oh, actually, so I, I that was something I was worried about. How much I got, right? Telling people or whatever. But I had this. So we done the deal, right? Um, it was so we fought the case. I won the case, and then we had to do. I did. We, I, there was no money given. Right, so we had to go back and fight then on the fees, how much oh, it was yeah. to get. So it's done different like that. So we were on Zoom doing this, right? And my solicitors were here and me and dad were here, middle of the night, out in our house. And mom, mom and dad were there with me. And then we agreed a fee. Right? Mm. And I, was, I, I should have got more probably for the shit that I went through. But look, we we're at a stage where I wanted to get on with my life, and it was you it just was, wanted to start was, another chapter. It was chapter. enough to get me going, right? Mm. It was, it was. Look, it was decent money. But they came back then. They said, "We'll only give you that, but you have to sign a non-disclosure form." I'm here, and I would have offered the money for them to fucking because I didn't want people, you know, not no mm. one. So, so I signed signed a non-disclosure form. So that's why I can't tell you, but I might tell you. That was a long way of telling me you can't tell me you bollocks yet. <laughs> so I knew because you thought you were going to get it there. You but, fucking prick But yeah. that's the question, right, that I get. A lot, some people right, wouldn't dare ask you, right? Well, but I don't mind you asking well, me. Well, I, I tell you why. Uh, there's no money pay you. No money. And I wouldn't wish what I went through on my worst enemy. Like, I have I met you just ju just last yeah. week there, I met you. Vicky talked to you on the phone a few times. Vicky is, you're lucky there, yeah. I don't know what the fuck. Well, she's, I know, I know. I, yeah, punching, punching. Yeah, you're doing well, yeah. But um, it's it's a hard road. And it's not, I, I, I think that, I don't know how you do it. I hurt me back this week, right? I'm not saying that, yeah. right? <laughs> I'm not saying, before anyone goes, I'm not saying that I had a spinal injury. I know. But it's debilitating. And pain, I don't know how people do it. It's like you, you, like, do you struggle every day? Or you don't uh, even care? Like, I, from the few times I'm ever talking to you, you're, it is you're such a, uh, I don't just, I'm just going to do this day. Yeah. This is my day. This is, and like, I'm going to make the most of right, it. Right, and I will buy, right, I, I'm, I, everyone will know me, right, I'm, they'll be like, that fucker never shuts up talking, right, but I, I like talking to people, right? Mm. And you, you learn a lot and you meet characters. And I love talking to people too. Yeah, it's fucking, you, you learn off different people, right? And you take a little bit off everyone, right? But this old boy said to me years ago, he said, he's like, life's a game of cards. He says, life's a game of poker. He said, you just have to play the hand you're dealt. And I kind of took it in. I was like, fuck yeah. He was like, I was looking at him. And he was like, if you get a bad hand, you still have to fucking play it. And it, he said, do you know what? He said, you can win with a bad hand. Yeah. And I was like thinking, do you know, he's fucking right. Like, do you know? Do you, do you ever get down? Nah, maybe f like I so do you know the way like you you wouldn't see a whole lot of things on social media about me right because I fucking don't post shit in that because every fucker has to be depressed to do something do you know do you know like not everyone but a lot of lads like feel 
oh, I was suffering from depression, blah, blah, blah. I, I honestly never suffered from depression. Might have been in bad form for a couple of days, but for a couple of, for Is your couple, father like that? Um, nah, I don't know. I, nah, dad is just always on the go. Do you know, like, he's like, fucking hell, just. You were always on the go. Yeah. You work every single day. Yeah, I work out every day and I work every day. So we do a little bit with the houses. And so then I also have, um, so back in, back in, Jesus, I don't know how many years, like I said, not good years. So I start you, because I'm still a little bit, you know, walking around, I'm slow and steps and shit. Mm. So back in a good few years ago, right, when I was good enough to stand and shit, I was out in Portugal on holidays and I seen these dudes on segways. I was like, fuck me, if I could get a segue. Oh, for fuck's sake. Right? You ever fucking learn me, dear man? I could get around a lot easier. So I got a segue, and lad, the segue changed my life. I seen you rocking around the other I day. I fucking segue changed my life, lads, I swear. So I can literally do, go anywhere, do anything that I could do walking, but I'm on a segue. So. The One. most ironic thing i seen in the last week was this yeah. lad getting over fucking GTR, right? <laughs> <laughs> Hopping over to the back of it and getting the Segway out and tearing around this car so, park. And lad's looking like, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> but so I, I went out, so I came back from Portugal and I was like, I need to go fucking see how can I go on a Segway. So I got on a Segway and next thing... People start, I was going around, right, next and people had seen me. So I ended up fucking starting up a Segway tour business. And we have, um, we do this thing now called Segway for Schools. We have about fucking, Jesus, I said close to 40 Segways, right? And I have a crew of guys go to schools all around the country doing Segways for school every day. So they, we set up an obstacle course and that just came out of fucking. That's brilliant. It's fucking funny. Like, but then the thing is with the Segway lad, right? So I got the Segway and I love fucking, I love GAA, right? I, I'm very passionate about it, right? And when I was on me, fu- like I was a cunt when I was young, I was like, you know, I'd have a soccer match Sunday morning, but I'd be drinking Saturday night. I'd be, I'd just, and then I was like, when I seen how good people are in the town and how, you know, the GAA is the source of that and the fundraising and the way people were good with me, mm. I decided like, look, to give back to the town and, and I was at Thomastown matches, right? And I reckoned I could see what was wrong with some of the things. And I, you know, infrastructure me, wise, no, just, the training. just wrong with the team. Yeah. That just we, I believed more, and just we weren't winning things. So I got involved, um, myself, and one of my best mates, Dharma, Dara, Dara McGarry. Um, do you know, like Kenny Goalie, James mm. McGarry, his son Dara, um, and then my next door neighbor, Tucker, Hannah's brother. And kind of, I kind of picked it, t- I wanted to do it and I picked, asked the lads to do it for particular reasons, right? And so we took over a minor team that were like fucking shite and we won the county final and th- we won the double. And I was like, lad, this is one of the best, th- I, I was so happy because I gave back, right? But the bond we had with the young lads, because I, we were a young bunch, and a fucking crack lad, but I'm zipping up and down the line on a Segway. Like, so you can imagine I fucking... And people that don't know you must think you're a fucking eager. What the fuck <laughs> is this lad? Like Get off the fucking pitch with that joke, you. Do you know? But then up around Kilkenny, everyone would know me yeah. and I get away. So I went down to Waterford one night, right? So this was after, we were with the Biners. So then I went on, I was with the Miners for one or two years, and done well. And then I got involved with the club, the Camogie team, right? And we're down in Waterford one night and we're playing um Waterford team and it was fucking, you know, intense. And we had a good team, good girls, like, and they had a good team. It was fucking, this was still only a challenge, like, but it was fucking, and uh, John Milan was over at the far side. He would have been over the team, right? Mm. And so at one side of the fucking thing, I was there on the line and I was like, we were getting a little bit of a roasting down in this corner. So, Going over the team with me was like, I said, listen, I'll go down to that corner, I said, because the fucking distraction then comes straight on me. Mm. So I went down to the corner, I was like, do this, do this, done a bit of shouting, you know, and could see straight away, like, they were all focusing on me, and this one on the line, she started giving me a little bit of shit. Like, like get off the pitch on that, you, who do you think you are on that? And I was like, 
Like, I do oh, think, that awkward. Do you fucking think that, like, she could see the crutches on my arm and the stick, and I was like, are you stupid? Like, I let it go because, you know, I was like, I just go on up the line a little bit more because I had done my job, like, and I was mm. after fucking distracting and we were covering that area of the pitch. So I was going up and down again and next thing, she fucking took it on herself to, to take me on. And I... Tell, so, please tell me you drove over. I just, so I turned right and I stopped. And I said, sorry, what's your problem? She said, what's your problem? Why are you doing on the pitch with this? And I said, I have a fucking disability. I said, I am not able to walk. I said, I said, have you a problem with that? Have you a problem with disabled people? And she's like, and I said, I tell you what, there's, see that guy up there? He's disabled. Do you want to go up and have a go with him? <laughs> and I said, do you know? And she's like, I could see her. And so then I knew I had her. And next thing, all the people around her were like, oh my God. And do you know? So then I was like, come on, come on up here and we'll have a go at this fucker. Or is it just, you don't want disabled people involved in GAA? I don't mind if you say it. And, so she fucking like went from like down into the, you could she shit yeah. herself like you know. So then, then I was going off and a few minutes later I was going down the line. I just would give her a wink, and she was like, like that. And then I was like, she. But in fairness to her, like she was going out after the match. She said, I didn't know. I didn't know. And I said, Well, you should fucking think before you talk, shouldn't you? And she was like, I'm so sorry. And I said, That's grand. I said, Listen, I was only having a bit of crack with you, you know. And but the thing about the GAA. It's fucking Is that your favourite thing to do now? Uh, torment people. Yeah. I'm, I'm a bit of a shit star, all right. I know, like, the GA though. Uh, I took a year out now because I tell you, I was with the girls for three years with, with those management team was there. And then the end of last year, I kind of, shit got, I was ended up fucking training my daughter's team and the seniors. Oh, and hardship. Hardship. And then, we were winning. We we done. We won like two county finals in the three years that I was waiting. But last year, just we lost. Uh, last year's county final was amazing because we lost a load of our best players that were playing with Kilkenny and everything, and they went off traveling, and we were written off. And we got them together and we won, right? But then got a bit of shit off one or two parents that were like, like, and then I was putting all this fucking time, and then some of the girls we, we were down on numbers, and I'm like, I'm putting all this time in even though I'm not the main person, like I just do my little thing and help and I get a little, I can get energy out of people and I can, I can get, I know I can get something out of people that is not just about hurling and GAA. It's, you can get them to push a little bit more. You can more. get them to push. When you, it's, I think it's because, so Dara, right, is the guy I mentioned there and, and if you remember, he went through something with a, his mom was killed in the accident, right? Dara has it as well and that's why I picked Dara's a lot younger than me I'm actually friends with Dara's uncle and then when mm. that happened Dara kind of came into our group and he has it it's something when you've been through something been really, through some real shit some real shit and we have this passion for it and I swear to God right? we've done a, we done a team talk in the oh, before the minor county final right? and they were all around us and we gave it socks like, and talked to fucking hyped them up but Inside in the circle, it was electric. Do you, do you know the, that energy you feel in a team sport? And I walked away from Darren. I says, to, I looked at him. He looked at me, and I said, "We're going to fucking win." I knew, I knew. And the boy, but I, then we made this bond with the boys that you know we get on quite well. And then there was one or two on the team that had been through something similar to lost a parent, and he was a fucking somebody, and he had fire in him. Do you know that kind of a way? And so that well, was well we're talking about fire now, we're, yeah. we're probably running nearly in two yeah. hours now right but I can talk to you all day but people like you right I love getting people like you on because you've been through some real shit yeah and when you're listening and hearing and you're in the J yeah, you see the, all these young lads that are struggling and that are under pressure like what advice would you give all them lads ah man the fuck up like honest to god lads right I know I'm not in a, in a nice way. No, no, I know what you, mean. Like, you can say these things better than anyone yeah, like me look, could. You don't fucking realize how lucky you have it, right? Honest to God, we all don't realize how lucky. But even me, I'm fucking very lucky, right? And say the thing with with the kids nowadays, there's an excuse for fucking everything. Just go out and do it. And you know, what the you grew up, I grew up, we all grew up. Sticks and stones may break your bones. Mm. Bring that shit back because, like. Everything is offended. Like, you know, there's... It's, well, we're weakening everyone and by giving them a reason to get upset. And they're, they're promoting weak people. 
mm. to be weak or be weak. So he said this to me. He said that to me. Fuck off. Be be happy. Be proud of who you are. Like, that's the one thing I learned over. Like, I'm going up and down. I don't give a fucking rat if only when I know the people that mean stuff to me, I know what they think of me. And like, it doesn't mean, to, you know, I'm, I'm drawing attention on myself going up and down the line and a seg, but I don't really care. But other people need to, you know, young lads need to be proud of what they are or mm. who they are. If you're different, you know. You have to take your law and do what you can with it. Yeah, it's, like I said, play the hand you're dealt and just, just, I don't know, just not to be, just don't take everything See, with me, I don't take everything too serious. No, I, I'm very serious and, you know, life is serious. But I don't think everything over and over and over, you know. Just fucking go with the flow and enjoy things and be... Definitely the, time, the thing I've learned over the last couple of years is to enjoy, enjoy, be happy. So, don't, so go on, I'm, I want the best for Abby. But the most important thing for Abby, for me with Abby, is that she is happy. And if she's happy... Doesn't matter what job she has. Like I give her the platform to do anything she wants to do. Anything, right? And I'll work my bollocks off to put that there for her, right? But I don't give a fuck if she's happy. If she's happy cleaning toilets, go do it. But I just want her to be happy because that's more important. Money comes and goes. Mm. That'll go, we'll make more. Do you know what? You can't get time back mm. and you have to be happy. Are you ready for the questions? Go on. Are you ready? Depends what the questions are. What's no? I'm not going to do that one because that's obvious. <laughs> <laughs> this is stupid. One. Go on, ask me that one for the crack. What's the What's the worst? Thing ever? <laughs> um, I'm not answering that. I'm not asking that. If you could make, just I'd be fucked if there was worse. If I could give you, you another would, story, you would, you would. If you could make one phone call to heaven, who would you call? Um, maybe two. <laughs> I have well, one. I lost a friend when uh, I was 13. He would, got hit in the temple with a golf ball and died a couple of days later, right? And he got me through a lot. When I'm, when I'm over the years, when I was struggling, now I have a lot of good friends I used to talk to. Fucking, I have the best, best friends and I didn't get to talk to you and tell you how good, I would have loved to describe and tell you some stories about my friends and, and they're so good. But Dickie, Dickie died and he's buried out in Stony for a graveyard. And I spent over the years a good bit of time. When I was feeling shit, no, not like I said, I don't suffer from depression mm. that, but when I when I needed to just fucking maybe go out and have a little tear or maybe fucking just sit there and talk to him, he's the guy, he's the guy. And then, yeah, so... I You'd be of, like, at least I'd I'm love, here. Yeah, I love, he, it's funny... I don't know why, like, obviously, like, you know, it might be nice to ring your grandparents and stuff like that, but I just feel because Dicky got me through a lot and not being here, I should ring him. And then another friend that passed away, he committed suicide. I'd probably like to ring him as well. Fuck. But I'd like to give him a box in the nose first and then hug him. You know? <laughs> For, yeah. But anyway. What's something that you're holding on to that you need to let go of? Um, geez, I don't know. Fuck, I don't know if I. I should listen to other people's answers for this, shouldn't I? Before I come up, you I don't, don't have answers. No, I don't. I don't. I don't know if I'm. Maybe I don't really have fucking. Uh, I don't really have any. I don't think so. Do you believe I, in God? I believe in fate. God, if you. What does that fucking mean? <laughs> Whatever the, f no, faith is whatever you believe in that helps you. So, right, I mightn't be, in, I'm not the biggest believer in God and not, I used to go to mass to please me mother. And then, you know, as you go older, you go less and you go in the main events of the year. But by fucked, when I was nailed, I went to mass. When I was, every evening up in Dunleary, I'd be, there'd be a crew of us lined up at the church going in, praying to God, can make me walk, make me walk. So, and I used to be in there and be watching the old ones and they're fucking praying away. But whatever's out there, whatever they're praying to, that gets them through. So that's their fate. So whatever you believe in. What do you think happens when you die? Um, I don't know. What do you but, think caused that shiver just before you walked up, before that accident happened? There's something fucking 
there's energy shit out there and it's like positive and negative energy and people have it. And you feel it now, ever? Yeah, I feel like there's an energy on you. You have a kind of a, do you know, a good, there's a vibe. You can come up, like, I've honestly been asked to talk to people and I don't really, I've, you know, we've chatted a couple of times mm. now on the phone and shit like that. I felt like I could come up and talk to you. Like that's, a, to me, that's a kind of a, it's a kind of a gift. You can draw people and you're good at talking and that's why I follow you. I, I kind of, you're kind of cut from the same cloth as me and my friends. We've, we've, you know, just done the work, done the mm. hard yards and kind of, we're not too big for our boots. We work hard. I've, we're all doing okay and sh stuff like that. But like, there's Shane, Shane Flynn. Like we didn't even get to talk about Shane. And that's probably one mm. of the reasons we did come up to talk about, but, um, you know, there's a fucking energy off him. Like, you know, yeah. and people have, there's, there's, there's stuff out there. Do you know, there isn't, do you know, there's positives and negatives. Do you know, some people I just don't fucking. You just know. You just just, know. You're I not hate negative click cunts. With, yeah. I fucking hate negative cunts because like, it's like, say with the car, right? And, right, I go to shows and stuff like that and it's funny, right? White GTR, carbon everywhere. Awesome. I Fire comes out of the back of it. Fire comes out of its hole. <laughs> um, it's, uh, yeah, so I, um, Fuck a last draw was I saying to there? You're saying about people when oh, you yeah. it. So because this GTR, I obviously I, it's my I, I needed it because of my disability. It's my wheelchair car. Yeah. So big I wheelchair it. it's sticker on it. <laughs> obviously, like yeah, you need to so <laughs> so you get free tax, right? So on my tax disc is zero point zero zero. So like you know, it's a fucking nice car, right? And mm. I, I look, I love it. I done it. I done a job. I done a Dad talked me into fucking getting that one. I was going to buy an older one, and that's. I can't off. believe you blame your father for that. He fucking did. That's I hard cannot to believe. believe you just. We went to England. I went to that. England to buy an Audi, and Dad, we we, we look. Long story short, a fucking car got cancelled, and it ended up getting this a uh, uh, GTR, and then it was like what Dad's Audi was it? An S five. Gonna, nice fight. You, you made a really good decision yeah, in the GTR yeah I did I fucking love it when I drove the other GTR I was like fuck, I, that, that was like you're not buying another one but we done it look I flipped the house and I Merton made a certain amount on it and I was like if I make that amount on it I'll fucking buy the car and so I did it because I didn't know what I, was, I didn't know if in, when I'm 40 I could be like a fucking back to being in a wheelchair yeah. so I said fuck it I'm going to enjoy it but so I go to a car show and I do something right and next thing do you know these tire kickers there and they're like sure that joke would be grand but sure who the fuck you wouldn't, I wouldn't pay a fucking two and a half you'd be, you'd be an idiot to pay two and a half thousand tax and next thing they go over and they see the zero point zero zero and it <laughs> breaks their fucking heart do you know so I yeah. like I said do you remember the day I said yeah, to you yeah, watch yeah. your man and, next and they thing, did they were, and were coming they were, over and they were looking at the tax on it I didn't even I, know people did that that's, that's a, my, uh, neither did I until I was like I heard it one or two days because you know, they don't know I own the car and I'd be another lad looking at it or whatever just imagine two, that's your be two and a half thousand to tax. The next thing go and next thing the 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 disappointment that it's not two and a half thousand, it's zero point zero zero. She heard me today, your man goes to me, What why is that zero? And I was her, Don't say anything, but I'm a government diplomat. <laughs> and he's her, Are you? And he's like, I said, Yeah. And I went out, you know, but next question. What do you want to be known for after you die? Um I don't know. I'm I'd like to manage Thomas down to win a senior county final. That's a brilliant answer. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Yeah. I've been, I'm going to have to get John again with Shane maybe something because it's just one of them podcasts. I could, there's no end <laughs> to it. Oh, and I talk shit. I'll talk shit all yeah. day. So. But um, no, thanks a million for coming. It was a pleasure. And you're an absolute credit. Yeah. Well, look, and I actually will say I've, I've owe you a lot of thanks, right? And this, so I start. F I, Probably through some of my friends, right? I start following you, right? And it was because of you I start following Shane, and I start working with Shane, and we're getting good results mm. there in the last couple of months. So maybe in another, hopefully another couple of months, I'll get a good few uh, results, and we'll have a chat with Shane maybe and see. But you'll uh, be on one of those so one thank, wheel thank, segues thank after you. another way. That's the fucking, yeah, that's, that's the goal. I come in here and uh, Please I don't brought, let that be the goal. I should have brought the segue up for you and got you on it. Like, <laughs> no, no. We'll, we'll, actually, do you know what I'm we'll bad do? enough as it is now. Hey, do you know what we'll do? What? We'll get you down and bring down um, 
the guys and we'd bring you out one of the Mount Juliet maybe on the tour, bring the boys, the kids down and we'd have a fucking Sunday afternoon we'd get you out and the kids. It fucking sounds good to get me. Get you and the kids out in the segways for now Matt. Although I'm going to have a fairly small kid now in another way. Can you not fucking bring him on one of these? That's not fun. <laughs> That's not fun no. for me. But look, thank you. Thanks, man. No bother. Really Enjoyed appreciate it. it. Thanks, man. Thanks, man.